Hello, all my truth seekers. This is Cynthia speaking on Keisha's behalf, using her script and words, welcome to the truth show. In this video, I'll discuss the rooted multiplication equation for one and zero. Why are the numbers one and zero in multiplication counted differently than any integers after one? Was this done to confuse us and keep us from understanding the genuine matrix equation, among other things? To understand this, we must start at the beginning. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Once upon a time in the mystical land of Numeria, there existed a secret library hidden deep within the ancient forest. This library was unlike any other. It held not dusty tomes, but magical tables that whispered forgotten truths to those who dared to seek them. Our protagonist, young Ilara, stumbled upon the library while chasing a mischievous squirrel. The moment she stepped inside, the air shimmered with mathematical energy. Rows of tables stood like sentinels, each glowing softly. Ilara's eyes widened as she realized their purpose. Multiplication tables. The first table she encountered was carved from ancient oak. Its roots reached into the very fabric of reality. Alara traced her finger along the rows and columns, and suddenly she understood the essence of multiplication. The numbers danced, revealing patterns and symmetries. She gasped as the table whispered, I am Pythagoras's legacy. Learn, child, and wield this knowledge wisely. You know what? I don't have time for this. Let's get to the point. In the mystical land of Numeria, Alara discovered a secret library filled with ancient multiplication tables. Each table held unique wisdom, Pythagoras's legacy, the Babylonian base 60 system, Victorious's precision, and the celestial rhythms of Nicomachus. Armed with this knowledge, Alara faced a wicked sorcerer who sought to exploit the tables. Their duel played out in equations, and Alara emerged victorious, becoming the guardian of these magical secrets. The legend of Alara and the tables inspire generations, urging them to multiply kindness and divide ignorance. Keyword ignorance. I mean, Nicomachus was a playwright who lived in Athens in the 5th century BC. He was a younger contemporary of Sophocles, who was an ancient Greek tragedian, known as one of three from whom at least one play has survived in full. Meanwhile, new math was introduced into American public schools in the early 1960s. However, it proved difficult to maintain in real-world classroom settings. Multiplication facts are now used for problem-solving in addition to the classic times table style. Teachers stress learning how multiplication facts can be applied in various situations. To summarize, multiplication has come a long way, from ancient civilizations managing cattle to current classrooms teaching this key skill. Its historical roots continue to influence schooling worldwide, although, like many things over time, something's changed. I hope you now understand the origins of multiplication, which is addition, and the date of its introduction in schools. At some point, the numerals 1 and 0 were tallied as is. However, many people, primarily Negroes, had invented several items. Then, they introduced multiplication, whereas 1 and 0 were counted differently. This approach confused many people, and tremendous inventions abruptly stopped. If you do not trust me, check my sources. Terence Howard introduced the original approach of adding, and one and zero are no longer considered differently in multiplication. He questions why the numerals one and zero are treated differently in multiplication. Was this an attempt to keep us confused and in the dark? As a result, political figures could continue in power. Take a look at this clip. And I might get shot about talking about this right now, but I've got a book coming out called Does a Dollar Times a Dollar Equal a Dollar or Does a Dollar Times a Dollar Equal Two Dollars? And in the process, not only do I explain the death of the platonic solids, but I also introduce the new Tarian wave conjugations that replace this Euclidean way of life and gives us a uh, three-dimensional way of seeing the world. The moonlit alley echoed with the weight of Terence Howard's revelation, a clandestine truth that had remained veiled in the recesses of his enigmatic mind. That's what I'm saying. 
Do you want to see the world in 2D or do you want to see it in 3D? Because our math right now is 2D. Our math is black and white and stick figures. I want the world in, in, in multicolor, spectral vision. Uh, so you're saying one pound times one pound is equal to two pounds. But it's one pound squared, which doesn't make any sense because you've got a one squared unit. One squared. One pound squared. You can't, can you divide pounds? Can you divide money? If you can divide it, you can multiply it. All these things that I showed you guys, I've patented all these things. You know why I patented it them? Because in 1926, a man named Walter Russell wrote a book called The Universal One, and in it he introduced an entirely new periodic table. And there he, he introduced the two heavy water elements, and then plutonium and, and deuterium. Both of those, all four of those elements that had never been discovered, he sent out to 800 different universities in his book. Two years later, he watched as other um, people came and got Nobel Prizes for his work. Why? Because he didn't patent it. He didn't copyright it. So I copyright all these things and patented all these things before bringing them to you. They are true, and um, I think there's some value to them. The money is, the, there's nothing wrong with the money, but how we deal with the money. But if you, can, if you can divide money, you can multiply it. It works hand in hand. Okay, or you can't see that. You can't see dividing no, money. It's a matter of definition if you define, it's a matter of definition. A pound squared is not a unit defined. A pound squared. If you def multiply by mathematical convention, if you multiply one pound by one pound, same as if you multiply one meter by one meter, it should be one pound squared or one square it meter. It becomes two. Why does it become one pound squared is two, isn't it? Now, if you look at the, remember what I just said about the associative and the commutative laws. It says A is to be added to itself as many times as its units in B. And the only thing that prevents that is the identity element that sits up and says, no, the Jim Crow law sits. Black people sit in the back of the bus because that's what the law says without even having a foundation for it. One times one, one times any number is that number without a foundation, with no principle, it just says it. But if you go by your logic and you say one times one is two, one times th two, two is, is three. three, and then how would you define two times four? Is that, that that's two, that stays, all that remains the same. Anything with one, just add one. The first rule of okay, multiplication. Okay, then where's the difference between addition and multiplication? Well, multiplication is what? Exaggerated addition, isn't it? But isn't it a matter of mathematical convention? It's what is? If it was defined in the beginning, it could have been defined differently, but logical, it makes the Use most the sense. Mic, darling. Sorry. If you, is it a matter of mathematical convention? If you define beforehand that something, like, it, logically, it makes the most sense that one times one, if you have one laptop, one times a laptop is one laptop, that makes more sense than you say it's two laptops. Well, now, if you say... And then that's where the mathematical convention comes in. And that's, like, most, like, large part of math is convention. It's how it has been defined. It's a matter of definition. And it's wonderful. The convention is all right if the material and the information being shared in the convention is true. But when you're talking about dogma being added in with that thing that I showed you, did you look at the square root of two? Do you think that that's a loop, that that's a natural thing with the square root of two? Did you believe that? Pi, it's like messing No, 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 it's not the same though. It's not the same with pi. What we just did, we, 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 we multiplied, we cubed the number, and then we divided it by two, and we cubed it again, and divided it by two, and we did that a number of times, and that number still remained the same exact number, which we know cannot happen. As the city slept, Terence Howard unveiled a cryptic journal each page etched with the forbidden knowledge that could rewrite the destiny of nations. It's right there, and that's what they say is the difference between, that's what they say allows one times one to equal one, because one, you know, 1.414213562373095 dot 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 is the square root of two. But we know that that's not the case. For example, five or any number times zero, they say that the number five or any number times by anything is zero, meaning the number five doesn't exist, or does it? For example, five or any number times one, they say that it's only repeated once, 
So it's five or any number one, you multiply it by. You see, this theory is contradicting and repeating it out loud makes you think. I say that because after the number one, you can count the number as is. For example, two times two is four. Why? Because you count the number two twice. This carries on for the rest of the numbers, but why are the numbers one and zero different? Is it because the numbers one and zero are the rooted numbers of the matrix? I mean, think about it. With this contradictory method, they're saying that if you have two pizzas on one end of the table and zero at the other end, you technically have no pizzas. As we know, this doesn't make sense. Clearly, there are two pizzas still on the table. Zero means nothing. Therefore, you will get the higher number when you multiply against anything higher than zero. Because zero means nothing. Why did they want the numbers one and zero to be multiplied differently? This method has set us back many years since the 60s. While China and Japan used the original method, hence why they're ahead of us in technology now. Take a look at these clips. Energy in the universe is expressed in what? It's in motion. If something is still, there's no energy. We look at galaxies. Are they expressed in straight lines? Expressed in vortices. All vortices are expressed in what? Waves. All waves are curved. Show me a straight line in nature. You show me where the platonic solids come from. If you look at anything, there are no straight lines. Truly, in my opinion at least, that platonic solids don't exist. Platonic solids are part of the holographic matrix. The only thing that does exist are electromagnetic waves. That's all, and there are no straight lines. So behind fractal quantum holographic universe, there is nothing but electromagnetic waves. And those waves are propagating and being sent into this realm, into this dimension, carrying energy, frequency, vibration. And when they interact with conscious thought, that's when they collapse things into platonic solids. There's really only one true thing that does exist outside of what we consider to be the third dimension is consciousness. Terrence Howard, he's had an awakening of some sort. It takes a lot of courage to even come out in such a, a mass setting like that. He was referencing the flower of life with sacred geometrical figure. And it really goes back to uh, as above, so below. At the base of everyone's spine, are a group of cells uh, that are in the form of the flower of life from the time you're born and stays there until you die. When he's talking about the spheres, there are no straight lines. He's not saying that, that platonic solids don't exist. Platonic solids are part of the holographic matrix. The only thing that does exist are electromagnetic waves. That's all, and there are no straight lines. So when those waves are propagating and being sent into this realm, into this dimension, carrying energy, frequency, vibration, and when they interact with conscious thought, that's when they collapse things into platonic solids, which then collapse things into what we get as an illusion of solidity, an illusion of locality, an illusion of space and differentiation, an illusion of perception. You see, this is why we cannot tap into the matrix because of math misconceptions. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and hit that bell so you can get notifications for when I post more videos. See you later.